There you are. Hey, Flutterbys, it is Butterfly. How are you? Good morning. I'm having a really great morning. Um, I'm feeling energized and kind of high vibe, so I really wanted to take the opportunity to tune in with you because sometimes I feel kind of, you know, lower vibe and I really want to be making some videos more often and or I'm busy or whatever. So I'm taking the opportunity while I'm I'm up for it. I'm up to the job. I'm up to it. So hopefully I'll be able to put something together that sounds a little coherent because I, I really don't have a lot planned. But I have been um, good to myself in the last couple of days and taking some time for rest, rest, relaxation. I've been keeping up with the kind of things that I need to do on the daily, but also being really good to myself. And I highly recommend that. So take some time for yourself. Uh, Re-energize and revitalize and take some time for meditation and take some time for sleep and decaffeinate a little bit when you have to. Um, it's good for you. It's good for you. <laughs> I, um, I'm feeling a bit of joyful rebelliousness today, kind of outside of the box thinking and um, definitely have to share that with you. So what has done that? Well, I looked up um, you know, on YouTube, some fashionistas, and I've been kind of perusing them for well, probably about 10 years. And now that I actually, it snuck up on me, I am a woman of a certain age. I am 50. I am 50 and I'm proud of it. And I, I, I am recognizing that um, there's a few things kind of sneaking up on me where I'm kind of socially being told to know my place, know my place um, as a woman of a certain age. And it comes in ways of, you know, what? You're back in school. Uh, yeah, I keep on going back to school. I keep on. I don't think I've ever really left. I just complete something and I keep on going on to the next thing. Um, so somebody the other day was kind of saying, well, how old are you? And you're doing a, you know, how long is it going to take you to do this? And I'm like, look, babe, gone are the days, gone are the days where people go to school for two years or four years when they're 18, right out of high school. And they stay with the same job, with the same company for 65, you know, until they're 65. And then they <laughs> retire with a pension like those are those days are gone those days are, people are constantly having to learn and stay fresh and you know requalify and um, reinvent themselves really uh, so as a woman of a certain age I guess I kind of question you know this this person who was talking to me and saying you know how old are you first of all it wasn't her place in that in that context to be asking how old I was but I told her and you know, like, it's not a secret. Don't ask me my age in context of our talking about me starting a new school program. <laughs> because I'll tell you, in two years, if I'm full time, if I stay full time in this program, I'm going to be 52. And if I don't finish this program, or if I don't do this school, guess what? In two years, I'm still going to be 52. So I might as well do something that I like, right? I don't know. People, people kind of have this linear way of thinking. So I'm, I'm expanding and I'm thinking outside of the box and I'm thinking, you know, I want to share a bit of that with you because, um, people will, with their questions, with their comments, society has a way of compartmentalizing you and so that you know your place and mm -mm, think that outside of the box. And I have, I have been in the last few days huh, all over the place today with, with my conversation. There is a point. Um, I have been, uh, watching over the years, uh, some people who are my heroes. Uh, one of them is Iris Apfel. Iris Apfel, you can look her up. I'm not going to be leaving. I don't think I'm going to be leaving some, um, maybe I should leave the spelling of her name down below and some of the names because, you know, that might be a good idea, but look, look these people up because they are for me really inspirational. Um, Iris Apfel, uh, started out as a interior decorator, I believe. And then she went into textiles and then she, she's been like a fashion icon. Um, and her kind of career, uh, was her current career, I guess, has been kickstarted, I think at the age of 87, when she got this opportunity. Um, I think, uh, this museum came into her home and she tells the story of how they left with like 300 outfits and her fashion sense, the way that she dresses outside of the box, just, you know, coloring outside of the lines kind of logic, you know, just don't, 
disregard the rules, the fashion rules, and she's basically a fashion icon, uh, very, you know, international fashionista. And that started at the age of, what, 87? And then she she calls herself a 95-year-old uh, cover girl kind of thing. Um, now, I believe, uh, at the time of, the time of this recording, I believe she's 99. Anyway, uh, so I've been watching her for years, and she is definitely out of the box. She She wears, you know... Lots and lots of necklaces, lots and lots of bracelets, um, color, and she just makes it all work. It looks like art. You know, you can look at it and uh, my mother would never have approved, <laughs> you know. My mom was, was very much, um, um, there's a cohort effect with the way that she does fashion. Everything's kind of beige and, um, you know, a double string of pearls or one string of pearls with a gold chain and the, you know, the, the neutral colored nail polish and the tidy hair and the A-line skirts and the nylons with the smart shoes and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, and the right? So, um, all of those social rules of not wearing this color after Labor Day or not wearing, you know, all of those rules, very much what I grew up with. And so uh, for me, looking at somebody like Iris Apfel is uh, inspirational. She's anti, you know, everything that I've ever grown up with. And I love her because she, when I watch her, she gives me permission to do, oh, take out all the stuff that I've collected in my closet, in my drawers, in my boxes, in my little containers and to put them on and to kind of say, you know what? Um, I've had, I, I now have the, the color of hair because that for whatever reasons is the thing that gives me permission <laughs> to kind of say, it doesn't matter anymore. I don't need to fit in that kind of social box anymore. Right. So she's one. Um, the other one is, um, Sephora Salomon. Oh, I don't even, I can't even tell you which one I like more. Sephora Salomon or Iris F. Fell. I just, they both, they both tickle me in a different way. Sephora uh, will, will talk about uh, um, how her, her mother was a seamstress and how her father was a tailor. And so she grew up with them actually um, really kind of tailoring and sewing in their own way, embellishing and putting on, you know, quality clothes on her on Sephora as a young girl. And so she really kind of fell in love at an early age with fabric and textiles and having an appreciation for things that have been well-made. Um, and they both talk about how fashion doesn't have to be uh, a hugely expensive thing. Mind you, Iris Apfel has like really expensive jewelry. She has her own jewelry line um, of unique things. So there's that. But um, the, the people who I tend to look at really are inspirational because they'll talk about like going to thrift stores and going to, you know, buying things secondhand and finding those gems and finding those, uh, things that, that you love, that say something about you that are attractive to you and you put them on yourself, not because you want to look like everybody else, not because you want to be a clone with the jeans and the t-shirts and the running shoes and the baseball cap or the whatever. Um, but but basically because you create your own fashion and you say for yourself, you know, I don't need to look like everybody else in order to look good in my eyes. And it's my opinion that matters. And if you like it too, then, then, you know, uh, then I'd be eye candy for you. You know, that's very nice, but you have to express yourself. So, um, yeah, just really kind of getting outside of my own, um, self-imposed box, I guess, because I've been complacent and com compliant, um, sometimes wearing the one wild thing that I like, but never wearing more than one wild thing at a time or never more than two. Um, and just kind of saying, you know, this brooch uh, with the matching earrings that has been in my, <laughs> has been in my box for probably about 15 or 20 years, uh, and I haven't worn them, um, I'm wearing them today. I'm wearing them today and I'm wearing matching green nail polish. And I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe having all the same color on all of my nails doesn't have to happen. And other people do that too. They, they put different colors and different patterns and stuff. So I've been getting, getting excited about color and getting excited about just um, self-expression. And I think part of 
why I've been giving myself that permission is because because of my age. This is a change that I'm going through, and I'm really excited about it. Because when you, when for whatever reasons, I get older, and it's it's like I don't have to, you know, follow the same rules as I used to. Because, um, you know, I don't know why. Why is that? It's not like I ever had to. I just did. Oh, other people's opinions. That's right. It was that. Anyway, so I um I got like different colored stuff that I'm going to be kind of playing with on my nails later. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do it. So this is like a crimson red, and this is like a, a yellow. I never would have bought this this color ever before. I don't think I ever have. And then of course I have like a lot of other fun colors and stuff. Now, what I normally would buy over years is clear. Yeah, clear nail polish. Mm -hmm. Uh black I would have worn for Halloween, but now I think I'm gonna accentuate something with that um also black i would normally buy to touch up little things that need to be you know that were nicked in the house <laughs> and this would have been the color that i would have used this is a pink i don't know if you can kind of see it but any shade of pink little shimmery neutral ish kind of color that's what i would have worn um now these are like blue and green so this is the green that i have what is it called is there a name to this green Oh, Made in Jade. And this sparkly blue is called Frozen Solid. Anyway, whatever. It doesn't matter what they're called. You buy whatever you want. Um, so, yeah, thinking outside the box. Now, this is a necklace that I've made. So it's particularly of interest to me. And I think I featured it at some point. There's green and blue in there. And so that's, I made that um, to sit right here in between my, my heart and my throat chakra so that I can, you know, when I want to work with my heart and my throat chakra and those colors, I want to be mindful about my communication and how I feel. That's what I wear. Um, but I, uh, I didn't wear absolutely every green piece of jewelry that I have, but I certainly um, wore some of them. This one I've had since probably the 1970s. See, it's a bracelet that kind of hinges in the back. Um, and this other one here, I just got this yesterday. And this one, this is a vintage sort of uh, thrift store find. And then the matching earrings. Aren't these lovely? Hang on here. Let me just see if I can. These are snap-ons, by the way. Isn't that great? And the matching brooch. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. So we have Isis, uh, sorry, Iris, Iris Apfel and uh, Sephora Salomon. Now, I'm going to give you some information just in case you want to kind of look up this fun stuff. And uh, so there's the, um, if you're looking, I just wanted to kind of make sure I hit a couple points. Um, <clears throat> so the idiosyncratic, idiosyncratic fashionistas, doesn't come off the tongue very easily, idiosyncratic fashionistas. And these are two women, uh, Jean and Valerie, who, if you look up that, they'll, they'll talk about being of a certain age and putting together their outfits and thinking outside the box and making up your own rules for fashion. Um, and <clears throat> one thing that kind of came about, I think it was uh, a film, it might've been a book, but I think it was a film and I haven't seen it, but I've only seen clips of it and it's called Advanced Style, Advanced Style. And that's Ari Seth Cohen, who featured a number of women. And I think some of these women actually were in there, Sephora and Iris as well. Um, and Jean Valerie, I believe that those were four that were in there because what I did is I found, um, Advanced Style and then... Um, I ended up kind of finding their names and then looking them up and they have, you know, features of their own, um, on the internet. So you can look up, uh, all the women that actually, and even now men with advanced style are wearing different, why can't men wear color? Why can't men wear printed pants? No. Um, so if you look up advanced style, there are people who are doing fabulous things with how they get dressed, like literally putting things that look like woven baskets on their head as, as um, hats and headdresses and stuff and, and just feeling comfortable and feeling like they're expressing themselves. Uh, so somebody who wants to kind of be creative, but who doesn't like the way that things look when they paint or color or draw, uh, they can use themselves as their own canvas and kind of get things from wherever and where you know, express themselves and, and um, they become their own walking art. So that is awesome. That is wonderful. There's another thing that really kind of excites me about this whole 
uh, self-expression and uh, tossing out the rules is that um, we can be less compartmentalized. And what that does for the rules that people live by, uh, especially when we look at all the isms, all the reasons for why we judge each other as not good enough or not fitting in our group, uh, that kind of, you know, when you're dressing the way you want to dress and if it's a little, you know, outside of the box, not being a clone for whoever decided was the color of the year, uh, not being a clone for the thing that everybody else is wearing. What it does is it basically says, your rules may not necessarily matter to me. You are okay as you are, and I am okay as I am. It's a nonverbal way of saying, I make up my own rules. So, you know, it's up yours, <laughs> basically. I'm trying to find a nice way to say it, but you know, screw you kind of thing. So, uh, but gently, gently, it's basically saying, uh, you know, you, you don't need to kind of feel compartmentalized anymore. Uh, if you previously felt compartmentalized. So that is healing, uh, that, oh, here, see, there's some more colors that I've bought in the past. There's a nice little charcoal. Yeah, I've been kind of, but this is another kind of a shimmery pink. Maybe it's the same damn pink that I bought before. Oh, it is. I bought the same damn thing twice. Look at that. See? Uh, well, anyways, my box is getting bigger <laughs> these days. My box is getting bigger. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, those isms, those racism and classism and ageism and ableism and ism, 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 uh, where you basically will look upon somebody else and say, you don't fit in our group. And so therefore there's a certain level of judgment and denigration there where somebody else is feeling that oppression, uh, and that, uh, and carrying the weight of that nonsense kind of rule system. Um, that is out the window and it's more and more out the window as the years go by. So I really think we're in a, in a day and age where um, it's great to be alive at this point in history. It's really great to be alive because we can, we can be self-expressive -exp and it's okay. That judgment is less acceptable. Um, so that's important. The other thing that I want to kind of mention, and I'm glad I'm thinking about it now, is, um, well, you know, I found, I, I'm not sure about this. So I looked, I looked it up. I had bought a book for my mom. Now, I think she got insulted by it uh, and probably tossed it because I've asked her for it years ago and she, and she no longer had it. I bought it for her birthday. And it might have been for her 40th or 50th birthday. I'll have to do some calculation to find out when it was. But I believe it was, um, and I remember where I was. So I was taking some social work classes and learning about ageism. And this would have been around the, the years of 92 to 94. At least in my memory, that's what I think. 92 to 94. And there was a poem in this book, and this book was called, uh, When I Am Old, I Shall Wear Purple. Now, this, this book was a collection of poems and works, if I recall correctly. And in that book, there was a poem called, When I Am Old, I Shall Wear Purple. And the poem itself, I'm sure you could look it up now. It's been popularized over years. And um, it was new at the time. Um, when I look up now, the year that that was published, we're looking at 96 and 97, which seems a little incongruent to me because I thought I had bought the book from my mom between the, the years of 92 to 94, which would be impossible if the book actually only came out in 96 or 7. Anyway, that's the time frame that we're looking at. And I bought that from my mom. And the poem itself was uh, talking about how when I'm older, I'm going to be able to wear purple because purple was just not the thing to wear back then. You'd have to wear beige and grays and follow all these, you know, these, these social mores and these rules and stuff and sit with your knees together and wear an A-line skirt and 
polish your shoes and clean your nails and speak with this way. And anyway, um, so it was just talking about this, uh, when I'm older, I'm going to wear purple and I'm going to be flamboyant and I want to, you know, color outside the lines and I'm going to live outside the box and I'm going to wear a red hat because it doesn't match purple and I'm going to love it and whatever. And I'm going to be self-expressive. So look up the poem if that interests you. And, um, and so the, the book itself was recommended by, um, the teacher that we had, the professor that we had in the social work class that I took. And I thought it was absolutely so inspirational and wonderful that I bought that for my mom. And it probably wasn't the right thing to do because she didn't appreciate it, I don't think. <laughs> but I would love to, actually, I should I should really kind of get my hands on that book if, uh, if I could maybe order it again. But I remember the attitude of just kind of looking to being at an older age and kind of then you have permission to, to do as you want. And my message is, you know, don't wait until you have gray hair to kind of give yourself permission. Um, and if you find a couple of straggly grays coming around, um, if you don't like them and you want to color them, that's great. But make sure that it's for your own reasons. Uh, don't do it because somebody else is telling you that you shouldn't be having grays and that, that being younger is um, the only thing that's really important <clears throat> because it's not. Because when you're older, you have experience, you have maturity, presumably, you have, um, you know, more knowledge, and more kind of, it's, I just feel more self-assured because I've been able to see patterns of uh, behavior and people and decades that passed and things that used to be as shocking um, aren't as shocking anymore. So, uh, yeah, there's something about that. And I just want to kind of mention that poem to you because, you know, take the permission to express yourself uh, at a younger age. Um, and I think I think the uh, the messages in society are kind of allowing for that. So you don't have to feel the, the shame and the oppression as much as you would have at one point if you end up dressing in a way that's less than, you know, the prescription of the year for that, the, the fashion, you know, I just, whatever. Self-expression is style, is style. Fashion, anybody can learn fashion. Fashion is something that is prescriptive and, um, expensive and um in a box like can you imagine prescribing one color for everybody to wear for that year how how do you how do you even how is that even like a thing um that that kind of rule system you you, you hear that in the devil wears prada where meryl street basically talks about the color cerulean and she's putting you know anne hathaway she's she's putting that the the employee in her place by talking about how colors get chosen. Um, so yeah, I love that movie. That's a really awesome movie. The devil wears Prada. Anyway, all of that to say do your own thing, babe. Yeah. All right. So there's uh, 23 minutes of babbling around self-expression and just kind of doing it. Would I wear this for an interview? You know what, baby? I don't know. What I can tell you is that 20 and 30 years ago, I would not have. Maybe because of my, because of my age, maybe because of my position, uh, my developmental sort of where I was in maturity, um, maybe for whatever reasons. But now we're at a different point in history. And um, well, I know for myself, I probably wouldn't have worn something like, well, I probably still wouldn't dress like Iris Hatfell or Zipporah Solomon <laughs> on any given day because that takes too much work, but I love looking at it. And I know that um, I, I do plan on continuing to be a little bit more self-expressive. I've been starting with the headdresses this past couple of years um, and having a YouTube channel where more than just a couple of people will see me where, you know, usually I'm about t-shirts but uh, I have little areas where I'm poking outside the box. And I'll tell you, it even translates into card reading. When you're looking at, um, I, I'm not going to end there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this in here as well, just at the end. Card reading 
um, because I do talk about that on my channel. I'll just kind of give a bit of a segue. There's something very prescriptive about tarot card reading where you have traditional meanings. And that's really important, I think, in some ways when you're starting to learn how to, to read. But there's also some leniency and some ways to be expressive. Now, if you are, um, as I have been at times, really kind of stringent about card meetings. Uh, you may not want to stray away from, from the card meetings um, and stay inside that prescriptive box. And if that's the case, then I would say go to different boxes as well because there's a lot more than tarot cards for readings. If you want to stick to the prescriptive tarot card meetings, that's fine. But you might want to go to, um, you know, tea leaf, card readings. I have a couple of other decks that are coming in. There's plenty of oracle decks out there. And that gives you a bit more flexibility where you can embellish and add on and make your card readings a little bit more fluid, let's say, and interpretive and intuitive. So there it is. Find where your comfort zone is in your card readings. Find your comfort zone in the way that you express yourself with the way that you dress. Uh, that's what I have to say. That's what I'm leaving you with on this Sunday morning. Take care. Have a great day. Onward and upward.